Potentially the last game of Eastern play here at the D2L. LGD Trails, LV Gaming, 2 to nothing in our grand finals of the bubble race. What's on the line? Well, how about a trip to Vegas? Our grand finals at Caesars Palace. Coming up first week of January, LV with the win in this game. Punches their ticket, and they're headed that way to meet CDEC and two other teams from the West. LGD, on the other hand, well, they're down to midnight hour. No room for error anymore. They've got to get it together, Trouth. And let's be honest, LGD didn't look all that bad in game one or two. These are games that went 50 minutes. But LV just seems to kick it into this next gear. They, they, they seem to always find the answer. That's how it's been all throughout this D2L season, just always finding an answer. And now they find themselves one win away from going to our grand finals. What a season it's been, and what a series this has been, by the way. That game, too, one of the craziest I've seen. Ten seconds remaining. And going to guess you're muted. Five seconds remaining. Okay, this Ooh. time I unmuted myself and client, but my actual HyperX, uh, <laughs> the, the little thing, the knob, I never muted, but I, I did. Damn it, uh, I swear. Welcome back. <laughs> sorry, sorry about sorry. that. Sorry we about can still that. Talk, we can still talk about draft. Not a problem, not a problem. Uh, uh, LV grabbing the Skyrath, the Ogre, the Centaur, and the Anti-Mage. Ember Spirit, Bat, Ancient Apparition, and Lion for uh, LGD and MMY. Going to get his hand on the Lion again. Yeah, dude, the LV lineup has just been so interesting Five with their drafts. This is one of the first things that jumped out to me when we were casting them. Is They could do something different every single time. Like, exactly. they're not set into their, you know... Tide Ember and Skyrath. They're, like they drew, they're like I mean, last game is a perfect example of that, and they actually win with that kind of stuff. Yep. This time they're bringing up an anti mage with a Skyrath. They haven't drafted Skyrath from the first two, so they're and that's the mark of a very like next level team. It's just the versatility and diversity of heroes that you can draft, and just shows how comfortable all these players are in playing whatever hero that their captain wants to draft them. In this case, it's in Flame, who by the way is just. An extremely good player. I didn't know much about him. I was looking more towards CYF, who's also a very good player. But everyone, honestly, Whisper, Len, Demons, great support play. And Flame, you have to give everybody credit here. DDC with the fantastic Ancient Apron in both games. Won't get it this game, though, so that goes to LGD. But I was wondering, last game, I thought LGD was actually going to pick up the Ember Spirit because they banned out the Invoker. Remaining. I was like, haha, ban Invoker. Now you can't purge my shield. Five and they actually did remaining. this time, so... They are going to get grabbing a Baden in that last pick Gaming position. You know what? I'm pretty sure that's a mid a Baden. We've seen LV Gaming do this before. And, of course, they do have some flex and versatility, but I'm pretty sure they're just going to defensively trialing the Animage, run the Abaddon mid, and if they have the success we've seen them have with it before, it actually gets really, really nasty. And 
like you said, the invoker ban on the side of L- LGD makes sense. I want to see. I mean, they look pretty typical. It looks like they're going to be looking for either a mid or a one position. I mean, we see teams in the East constantly run the Ember as uh, a pure side lane carry. So they could do that with the Ember Spirit this time Naga if they want. But Simon. nope, they're going to go Naga. So we'll see who's going to be going uh, going to what lane. But yeah, this is uh, another fun one, man. I can't wait to see how LV manages. Yep, it's going to be in flame on the Abaddon. So can't wait to see how he manages that hero. Yeah, and I believe that they've drafted this before as a... Yeah, it was actually four in flame. Never mind, I remember yep. this, yeah. Yep. So, and I believe it worked out. And then mm-hmm. I believe they tried it out once, and I think that was the game where they drafted the... What was it? The Spirit Breaker and the Dazzle first, and it did not work out that time. Exactly. But it did work out another time before that, I think. ZYF on the anti mage. This should be fun to watch. And oh boy, Resident Sleeper. Here we are with the Naga <laughs> Siren. Well, I mean, they managed to make it work against the free farming lichen. Um, obviously, Naga, a bit of a different cup of tea. And I want to see what the plan is. They certainly have tons Five of aggressive potential, remaining. especially if ZYF wants to go with more of a fighting build. Um, last time we saw the anti mage picked up, it was a Battle Fury into. A uh, into a Vlad's, and I think that that kind of an approach would certainly work well for them. Um, they have tons of initiation potential as well. I mean, if they ever, and it's not really often prioritized, but the Ogre, if they're able to get up any kind of a mobility item on him. The Abaddon, though, I mean, we can talk about all these heroes. We've talked them to death. How about we talk about the Abaddon? We have seen them run this hero in mid before, and we have seen them succeed at it. It is actually startling how good it can be in the right circumstances. But that doesn't mean it's not without its weaknesses, especially when you figure, yep, it's going to be Siler on the Naga Siren. They didn't uh, switch it up or anything. Yao will be going mid on the Ember Spirit. And it's a lot of it's just going to come down to how effective the Centaur and the Animage can be. They really need Lin to have a good start and to do well. They get up the blink early so they can play that aggressive style that's that's gotten them to where they are now. But they're also going to need excellent play from ZYF once again. They, they need him to pick and choose his fights wisely, and when he does come, to have an impact. I want to say the actual other time they drafted this was against a Doom, and they picked it into the Doom. And yep. it's curious that they did this as well because they picked this into an anti-apparition. I know Abaddon isn't exactly thought of his like, healing capabilities per se. Like He's more of just... He's more centered around the shield than anything, which is also quite good against the Ice Blast. So his heals aren't going to be too effective, but um, his ulti will be effective, his shields will be effective in mitigating damage. And whenever you have some kind of healer on your team that can also be active and, and put apply pressure, like a Treant, for example, or a Witch Doctor, I think it actually works really well with a hero like Anti-Mage that's already elusive and hard to kill to begin with. So it's going to be really hard to get down this Anti-Mage once they actually start fighting. And this, I think, actually gives them the ability to fight on with five heroes. Like, mm-hmm. gives anti mates the ability to fight earlier than you would expect them to. No, I completely agree with you. And if I'm not mistaken, I can't remember the exact situation, but it was kind of like that, too. Um, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't it on the same team with a Timber Saw? I want to say it was, right? Was I, the, was the... I think so, yeah, because yeah. Whisper is their... I, I, I call him Whisper, because, but he changed his name to Lin. I got to call him Lin now. But yep. Lin was like, yeah, they're a Timber Saw player, so... It would make sense. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And it was the same kind of thing. It's They ran in mid, and then he just got over-leveled, and he started building a few items. He felt he felt basically immortal, like they could never do anything to him because of borrowed time and, of course, the power of a Photic shield and what have you. But on, you know, just having a Centaur and an Anti-Mage in this composition, like you said, no matter which one you're throwing the shield onto, no matter which one you're giving the healing priority to, you're just going to make it so hard for this team to bring them down. The Ancient Apparition, of course, can excel at that, at least at and uh, getting rid of their kill threshold, or I should say moving it up with a well-placed Ice Blast. But it's just going to be like every other Naga Siren game in so many ways. I mean, we can talk about the dynamics of the lanes and everything else, but what it comes down to is can you stop the Naga Siren? Can you keep her down? Can you do enough damage that she can't farm? And that's going to be the challenge that LV has to face, and it's a challenge, if answered, we'll, uh, which will deliver them to our grand finals. Yep. ZYF getting a pretty decent block here on the safe lane and already an ignite coming out from demons just to harass in july a little bit if he gets the archer in front he'll be in good position and actually the archer in front goes to the side of lv so since they don't have this pull counter warded yeah this needs to be their primary focus don't pull you just need to put all your attention on zoning out this bat and then once you've done that give some extra levels to where anti-mage is like three levels higher then you can start looking towards ganking mid and obviously you want to gank mid anyway because it's Silo on the Naga Siren, so. 
I'll take a look at the Abad. And if he does it the way he did last time, he'll actually end up putting his second point into Curse of Avernus. And we'll wait to see if that's going to be the case. Siler's actually doing some fair damage to him now. He's still got his Apotic Shield, so he's not sweating the right clicks all that much. And Nose Naga doesn't have enough mana for another Riptide anyway. And yeah, there you go. So Curse of Avernus, that'll be his harassment skill. Uh, I shouldn't say skill, his passive to use for harassment. It also makes it very easy to gank in the mid lane if there is a rotation. So this is going to be really where a lot of this match is determined in terms of how well they can manage Siler and what kind of pressure they can put on. We'll flash back here in a minute. Actually, yeah. Like, look, you see how much damage? Got the camera back just in time to show just how much damage he can output. And yeah, there's his bottle. So that's not going to be a problem anymore either. Lin, in the meantime, is soaked up almost an entire level, just hanging out over to the side, has not really gotten much out of lane. And the bat, yeah, the bat just gave up on the lane. He's level one juggling, and this is actually really inefficient until about level two or three. Yep, they missed another sentry. Oh, no, 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 they got the sentry. Okay, I eat my words. I didn't see it because they obviously countered it there, but then they're finally going to be able to pull now. This is a haste rune for Demon's Bottom. It doesn't have a stun and actually doesn't have a single point of experience, but can maybe get something done with this. Maybe he goes for... A courier snipe, which is going to bottle crow for for Silar. That would be really huge if he could. He's actually waiting behind, maybe looking for a bat instead. Won't find him. If he goes right now towards the mid lane, he would actually find that courier. But Silar is actually paranoid about it, and he's waiting to put the <laughs> uh, the bottle onto the courier at the tier two. So no courier sniping today. That's a good call. Well, they saw it. They saw the ogre pick up the the haste and then head right up That's towards right. their secret shop. So. He was aware it was a possibility, and like you said, being paranoid, paying off. And so, you know, it's only crazy. It's only crazy to be paranoid if you're not right. And yeah, in flame here in mid, doing just fine. He has 11 CS to the 15 of the Naga. Naga doing slightly better, but for the most part, Siler is having to play a bit more cautiously now. And again, I want to see when they start to roam. Demons needs his level two badly. He needs Fire Blast. Skywrath Mage is getting on towards level three. ZYF leads the CS chart at 19 and completely unmitigated free farm as well at top for Yao, who is right there behind him at 17. Yep, and Flame is doing quite well in mid. And great thing about Abaddon in mid is you don't really have to be worried about getting ganked. You can get rid of stun or you can get rid of slows yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you can just buff yourself up with the shields. You could be aggressive. You get extra movement speed too from the Curse of Avernus, which is really nice. It's an extra 5%. Um, no, it's a 15% static. Ah, I didn't know it was that high, actually. So you can actually get really, really fast. Without Boots, he's 356 movement speed. That's Boots coming his way now. And taking a look at levels, Naga's a little bit ahead in terms of pure XP. She's at level 5. He's getting there, though. He'll be there in just a creep death or two. And with his bottle not having any issue, let's see what happens with the 4-minute rune. It will be a... Uh, bounty at top and at bottom it'll be a regen for DDC. Doesn't like, doesn't look like he needs it much. We'll go ahead and take it. And in flame, gonna be saved the bounty room just to refill his bottle. Rotation into mid from MMY. MMY is level three, leaving that top lane now. And he's gonna go ahead and try to get something done in this lane, even if it is just soak experience, just to free things up a bit more for the other two. The bat in the jungle is now beginning to pick up. <clears throat> Four and a half minutes in, he's level three and a half. So, yeah, like, the it, it, really inefficient level one, but if you wait it out, you do catch up and start doing really well. Here's that gank in mid we knew was going to be important. Oh, he's so far forward. He's, oh, he's dead. He is so dead. And the damage, not even a question. Easy first blood, and Inflame's the one to draw it. Inflame even picked up the uh, Orb of Venom. Yeah. Just to make sure it happened. But up at top, they end up getting a return as they bring down the Centaur as well. So it ends up being one-to-one, -one, but the loss of the Naga far trumps the loss of the Centaur. And it's the first blood goes the way of Abaddon, which is really, really big. I believe he went, I, I think he went like tr face boots flads as well on top of the Orb of Venom and just ran right. at people. Like just was so, and you have not a care in the world because you're Abaddon, man. Like you don't have to worry about anything. Oh yeah, he's level six and has borrowed time now. So he definitely doesn't care. Yeah, and he can just, Zone Siler and his illusions take tower damage, doesn't matter. And, and this, the Aphotic Shield. The, the shield break damage is going to kill all these illusions instantly, too, because they mm -hmm. they take extra damage from your, from any kind of burst. So, yeah, I, I really like this. I see Centaur top taking more damage. So close to dying here. But he actually lives. Oh, my God, that was so close. 
Yeah, dough pretty deep. Didn't get the job done. They're going to dive in MMY, and that's not the way you want to be caught. That's about the closest to a Dodo equivalent of being literally caught with your pants down. Bend it over, sucking mana from a creep. No way to, uh, to get out and get into a better position there. Two to one. LV putting the pressure on in the right ways. In the meantime, though, in July, will find himself a haste. He's not six. Doesn't have his lasso. If he was, he might be able to make something happen, but he is at Radiant's least going to be very annoying as he gives a flyby, a bit of a buzz to DDC. They're going to come help him. He, the, like, the damage Radiant's output's going to be legit. And he's, yeah, he's just going to go for a dive here. Radiant's Being caught with a lot of damage, DDC's going to end up burning down amidst all of this, and they almost got him. He's so close to dead. 12 HP, and that has got to be maddening. They would have been fine with trading him for the Sky Wrath if they could have got him, but instead it's just a free one. Well played. Yeah, very well played. They're so close with ZYF's blink. If he blinked a little bit far further forward, just one auto attack is all he needed, but very nicely played by In July, and that's going to pump up his gold to about... Uh, did he buy a bottle? I thought he bought a bottle. Nope. Okay, 1,500 gold for him with the Tranquils, and considering that he had absolutely nothing going for him in the lane, this is pretty damn good. Yep, there's the phase boots coming out from Abaddon. Went for the magic wand upgraded as well. So just going to be able to be a big force and a big tanky mess to deal with right up in the front line. Centaur did make it at two level four in that off lane, even though he did end up dying once. So his level not abysmal. He's right on that second tier. Uh, the bat, because of his jungle capabilities, did leapfrog him and is now level six though. So they have to worry about the lasso and about 700 gold. They have to worry about the blink. Ward down, and we can see some pings going out across the map. In July, he's actually gone into the. Enemy jungle. They're going to try to punish him for this. No level 6 on Centaur. If he were 6, they could Radiant's get this kill for sure with Stampede. In July, is a little low health. And yep, they're going to spot him. And there's a concussive and the silence. And he's going to come back down to ground. This is a great kill for them. Fantastic kill for LV. As they not only slow the bat down, but they get Centaur the kill to catch him up. Well played. Atop the tier 1 did drop. And they're trying to pressure this top tier 2 now just to try to force a reaction and force the lanes to stabilize Radiant's a bit. Yep, really nicely done. Radiant's and I think, yeah, uh, Lin got the credit for the kill that, too. So he's about to 700 gold or so, which is good for him. TP reaction coming from the Abaddon, just to kind of stifle things a little bit here for LGD. He's got three and three, so no max of Photic Shield. Kind of interesting here. I would think that the Photic Shield max would be a little bit better because it lowers the cooldown to six. And it doesn't cost too much more mana, actually only five more mana, but wants a little bit of more hybrid build, a little bit more aggression. Well, this is the question when you run something like the Abaddon like this. Do you just bring it back to mid? I actually like that they're giving MMY, or excuse me, DDC, um, some attention here in mid. Let him farm. Let him do his thing to his level six at least. Yao farming right in their face. They're going to try to rotate MMY and Faith from the side as they are smoked up. In Flame, again, is just such a hard target to deal with. Look at the damage he's doing to Yao here. Like, he is just piling it on and forces Yao to even use the Searing Chains. And yeah, they're going to go ahead and prioritize elsewhere. This is the much easier gank to execute. DDC should be me here, and will be. There's the Hex. And the follow-up, very good kill for uh, LGD that time. Naga Siren taking the kill as well, so working out nicely for them. Net worth-wise, Naga is second on the board. It is the Anti-Mage, who has been left completely alone. ZYF, who is the most farmed. He's gone Brown Boots and straight up Battle Fury. In fact, he's got a Battle Fury done in about 300 gold now. So he's you're, we're talking like 11, 12 minute Battle Fury with Brown Boots. Yeah, pretty good. I really wish Inflame was maybe putting more attention in mid there with a faster TP. Obviously, turning fights is the best way to play Abaddon, not just being this kind of you know, annoying hero in your face, like, by yourself. He, he works, obviously, much better by mitigating, you know, stuns and turning fights and whatnot. So it's unfortunate he wasn't able to save DDC there. And that's actually two deaths for DDC. I think that's more in this game than the entire two combined previous. I really do. I have to double-check the first game. But yeah, no deaths last game. Yeah, sounds about right. Another smoke in July with a blink and a lasso. Wants to find a target, but everyone's a group from LV. They may suspect that this is the bad timing, and they're planning to try to catch them getting greedy. They have a sentry down on the low ground, and Flame's going to walk up there. Yeah, he just revealed his smoke, and in July, he's not revealed. And yeah, he's going to walk right up. He's got borrowed time. He is not the best lasso target, and they know it. They're not even going to try to go on him. They want Lin, but here comes the whole team. Let's see if they can turn it. Lasso onto Lin, and does get the stomp off. Doesn't hit anything, though. He's just going to end up being a free kill. 
In July, able to make it away. So in flame, a little out of position, unable to come help. Still chasing down Siler, but unable to catch anything. In the meantime, they do respond to bottom lane, and ZYF will fall back. He got hit with an ice blast at some point. LV is trailing a kill, but 11 minutes in. Let's take a look at how the efficiency looks, and it is in favor of LGD. They're up to about 2,000, or check that, 1,500 gold advantage, and the experience slightly in their favor as well. So the early laning phase seems, seems to be in LGD's hands. Yeah, what's what's Siler's gold up to? Okay, 2,500, just about. That's pretty good. I think the LGD is in a fine position. Ember Spirits, like, he, he's basically a free prime. He was in one position, but his items don't look too scary early on, but obviously with the fast radiance, it's... Very, very scary. Actually, action onto Inflame. The Centaur ult is going to come out. I think he's dead. Yeah, he's dead. Yep. Way too aggressive. Yep, he got caught right here. He was up there, got slept, and then they followed it up. Three to five. LGD fighting back with a vengeance here in this early game. This Naga Siren going for the Radiance Rush, as one almost always expects and nowadays. She's about 1,000. Ah, make it 1,200, 1,500, or 1,100, excuse me, gold away from completing it now and she's on a very good clip for it or from her relic anyway radiance will be a little bit after that and bots usually two at most minutes after radiance that too middle tower is under attack. and lv's got to find some kills they can't be losing heroes like they're about to lose lynn he's, he's gonna dead. be hemmed up yeah he's just dead stomps could have double edged there's a nice path or a nice blast rather and yep just a free kill for siler that makes him three and one now and you can't be doing that if you're LV. You just can't. No. I maybe need to get more active on these supports. Like, their initiation without the Centaur Blink is very bad. It's It has to come from a smoke gank. And speaking of smoke gank, no smoke, but they're walking up here. Here comes in Flame. Kind of early to the party, though. <laughs> He's trying to get this <laughs> auto attack off. Shield There's doesn't take ensnare. off in Snare, unfortunately, but yeah. Yep. Yeah, agreed. And Snare pierces magic immunity, and is there anything that gets rid of in Snare? I don't think so, right? Oh, there's, yeah. Like, for instance, the Ghost Scepter is very, very good against the Snare. Oh, it's because it's physical. Yeah. Yep, got it. You can dodge it with a couple other things, too, but, yeah. Good to know. Three to six. And LV really needs to get something going. And, yeah, it's hard to believe it. It's already getting out of hand. It's already 4,000 golden experience to the favor of LGD. And unless they start getting some kills... They are going to be in some trouble. Nice ward spots them out. They actually weren't smoked if they were. I think that's a free kill onto uh, ZYF. And he's going all the way back. They actually pinged him out. They see him with that ward. He needs to get Radiant's all the way out of here if he suspects something's up. And he is. Very smart move from, from ZYF. Finishes his treads in the meantime. So treads Battle Fury just short of 14 minutes in. And he knows they're down there. So he should be given the all, the all clear to push top. Is under attack. And ZYF will go ahead and find a double damage rune, so he's going to put that to immediate use. Going to farm the jungle, make sure he stays close to his team. In doing so, though, this is going to be the concession of the tier one. They are going to go ahead and glyph it. They need him up here to bring this tower down. There's going to be an ice blast that actually catches in flame. And he's going to be fine, of course, but... Tower finally will drop. Tier one in mid will drop in response. And I feel like that's actually bad. LV needs to be winning. They need to not be trading even. Like, they, they're losing, as a matter of fact, and losing quite hard. The gold did dip up a little bit there, but the Naga is going to have her Radiance so quickly at this rate. Yeah, she's she's got her Relic now. And another 300, 400 gold on top of it. Collapsing down the bottom, trying to find DDC and Demons, but no one home. Well, there is someone home, they just didn't see him. Yeah, and then the Ember is a secondary carry as well as... It's pretty scary. Like in the late stages of the game, he's going to truck these supports on the side of LV. Mm -hmm. And his searing change is very annoying to many members of this team. Like the Anti Mage is really good against him. Centaur canceling. Oh, I missed that one. But Skywrath, I saw the end of it. Gets a nice ulti off. I'm guessing he finally showed his blink from L from Lin. Yep. Forward to six now. And ZYF, and it's been, I feel like this is going to be a, a long, drawn-out farming game with not a lot of kills because we're going to see everyone dodging each other except for Inflame. Inflame's going to run at people, and everyone's going to try to run away from him. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. ZYF's farming patterns are very, very smart too. Like, it's not the fastest, but he knows where he has to go to get out of the out of harm's way from the Batrider, for instance. 
And so he's taking it safe, but it's it's really paying off because other players probably would have died at least two times by now. And Flame making his way over. They go with the drums build. Looks like they want to hook up his five. There's a three-man smoke coming from LGD. Let's see if LV wants to try to bait this at all. Any mage should get his eyes on an invis here. If he clears this camp and gets the invis, Radiant's nope, gonna leave it. And Flame's attack. moving in that direction too, but Yao's gonna Dyer's get there first. Tower is under invis could be very important in this. Yep, we're gonna have Lin caught with the lasso. There's the ice blast as well. In Flame right there to try to help, but way too late. Now Yao, even though he was silenced, gonna be caught with a fire blast. In Flame wants to go to work. Doing a fair amount of damage, but not enough. Demon's gonna be fingered down by MMY. And now it's gonna be DDC next on the list. As LGD is just pouring it on to LV right now. That's going to make it 9 to 4. And again, Naga, there's her radiance. 16 and a half minute radiance. And it'll be 19 minutes at the outside that she finishes her boss. In flank, gets caught by the Searing Chains. He's trying to man mode this on his own. And he actually is doing a sufficient job to force them back. There's going to be the Stampede. And Lin tried to find someone, but it's a waste of the ulti as everyone had already spread out. And we'll be TPing back to safety. Oh, Antimage gets a kill onto the Naga. They trade it, though. Unfortunately, <laughs> with the Radiance already being delivered there for Silar. But yeah, Inflame needed... Who got the kill first? What's that? Antimage got the kill first. That means Naga didn't get credit for the experience. So. Right, yeah, that's important. And that bumps him up to level 13, actually. That's two above the Naga, which is great. But uh, Inflame definitely needed to cast, like, his Miscoil on the, on the bat. He was, like, farming creeps right there instead. Miscommunication right there. If he gets that miscoil off, he doesn't blink in time, and the centaur gets the counter kill. Yeah. And I think in flame, I know I I like his style of play, but this game, I think he's been a little bit too like focused on trying to do his own thing rather than like if he's sitting behind the centaur right there. I think if he was a little bit closer, totally different fight. But centaur obviously getting caught right there with in flame a little bit too far away hasn't been uh, really paying off with this Abaddon pick that we've seen in the past. Yeah. Well, I mean with. It's still a relatively rare thing to see uh, a mid Abaddon. But the Animage to me, again, well, it looks like he's going very standard stuff. He's picked up his Yasha, probably on his way to a Manta. He's still leading a net worth for the time being. That will not stay the same unless he just goes bonkers and is able to keep up with a, a well-played Naga Radiance. And at what point do you think they'd finally just start saying, all right, ZYF, time to fight, man. Let's go. Mm, it's hard because... Part of me wants to say he can fight sooner because you have the Abaddon. Oh, here comes a Bat Rider TPing top. Was it spotted out? Nicely done. Like that little thing by ZYF. Just giving himself some extra information. So whereas before, he probably would have farmed up maybe one more wave or blinked over into the uh, into this camp right here. But now he's going to go away. Yeah, so these farming patterns are just really good by him and nice spreading. But They get a tower because of it too. Yeah. Because they saw those with illusions and they know they can't contest it, so free tier one. All those little things make a huge, huge difference. This is why warding is so important. I know that's obvious and all, but little bits of information just change the way you, you play a game and change the way you, you farm. So nicely done. But I don't think he has to get that active. I think he can just get six slotted before the, the Naga. I know it's crazy to think, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Well, he's been hovering around 13 to 1500 ahead of her in net worth. The next 10 minutes will tell the tale. And Yao going to be engaged upon CYF. Is going to get active. Comes in with a man avoid, and that's a dead Ember Spirit. So, thank you, ZYF. Must have heard me answer my question. I'm good now, he says. Don't even need a Manta. Has the gold for it just about. He will after this tower. And this is going to be an easy one. Unless they try to engage afterwards. No, they can't. Yeah, they're even going to leave it alone. Not even going to try to give the enemy mage the last. They just want to make sure he gets home safe. That's his Manta done. And yeah, that actually cuts their lead, LGD's lead, more than in half. Well played by... This is just what LV does. They fall, even when they fall behind, they don't lose their cool, they don't overreact, they don't sell out, and a dumb five-man smokes up the gut or whatever. They just find a way to get back ahead. Yeah. Now, they still do have to deal with the Naga, but there you go. Well, and then also just this warding is helping. Like, this ward right here, giving vision that the, for instance, the line has a blink, so that the jig is up right there. They know the bat was down there, so that frees up some more farming patterns and for farming time for ZYF. And the Vlad's coming out for the Abaddon. Oh, I hear a Centaur ulti. It's a disengage ulti, which is fine. I think it's fine this game that he uses it passively rather than aggressively. Yeah. And, and it was a 
It was out of fear. Yal just showed up. If they tried to kill the ancient apparition and Centaur missed his stomp, and then Yal showed up and they were scared there was a whole team, so they immediately stampeded away. Yeah, and yeah, with the Manta up, and he didn't go for Vlad's because the Abaddon picked it up. So saving, I, I believe he did. I think it's on the career. Yeah. So full Vlad's for him. This was similar to what he did last time. Well, he's in a pretty great position now. And he has been getting to farm very quickly. He's now 2k. I don't know. He's still actually right about where he was. He'll No, he will be about 2k ahead if he gets a, another wave on the Naga. I feel like Siler, I mean, he's farming, but he's not opening up quite the gap you would usually expect, especially now that he has bots. And they're just going to continue to take towers here. I, I really dig this. I really dig the fact that even if they have ZYF doing his own thing elsewhere, they're letting him trail into the fights, but they're keeping pressure up. They're not just being like, oh, okay, Naga's farming, let's farm too. They're actually trying to make people react. These illusions sure do hurt. And they're going to get a bunch of them down. The ZYF's here now. Lead the way, has his Manta. He's gonna hang on to it. Nope, Dyer's never mind. Gonna use him to help clear this wave. Very easy. And July's there looking for a lasso. And July being a great target, and they get nope. him. No! The Aphotic Shield on point from In Flame. He was waiting for that. He must have had the cursor hovered. There was no hesitation. Now they're gonna come back in. Beautiful initiation from Lin, only stopped by Siler. Let's see if they can turn this around. And they're going to try. There's the, the borrowed time, and now Demon's in trouble. But the Mana Void got Siler, and down he goes. CYF on point. And they're oh, another beautiful stomp from Lin. And now they're on the run. LV, how do you do it? Always finding a way. They're going to let them disengage for now. That is just so good. There's just no other way to phrase it. Lin got a beautiful initiate. Three were caught with the stomp. And then no, Song. Like, damn, how are they going to turn it around? And he hits another one just to seal the deal after a beautiful re-engagement coming out of the Song of the Siren. And suddenly, oh, very nice. Earth Spike, yeah, they get the... Oh, they're going to end up getting MMY in reverse, though. Now Yao, coming back out, wants to try and punish someone. It's 12 to 9. LGD maintains their lead. Lin's going to try to TP away. No, thank you. LGD getting the job done, and now we're actually just going to see ZYF disengage entirely. He's up to another 2,800 gold. Oh, very nice searing chains from Yao. And can't re-engage, just can't risk it. He's mine. Yeah, I, if you saw him, if you saw the positioning of uh, the Abaddon, you could see he was actually, yeah, he definitely had his cursor ready for it. He mm -hmm. knew it was coming. And he it was just so freaking fast. I believe the bat even had a uh, force tap there. Yeah, he did. Yep. So that's a definite kill onto him without that shield. And now you see the effectiveness. Oh, ZYF, he actually doesn't have mana for the blink. Oh, they're not going to go on him. Very okay, maybe they didn't. For him. Yeah, maybe they didn't see him or have full vision of him. But uh, yeah, that could have been close. But yeah, so now you see the effectiveness of this Abaddon when he's sitting with his team. It's so good if you're really fast mm -hmm. with your uh, with your Photic shield like uh, Inflame is. You know, even if he was sitting there and like literally with the skill selected and this cursor over the anti-mage, that's still so hard to time, man, because it happens so fast. Like, it takes so much focus Yeah. as soon as you see it, and to not and to not jump the gun's the important thing, too, because you can't, if you go too early, it's not effective. Right. Well, like, for, for instance, other spells like the Shadow Demon Disruption or even an Eventful Swap are much faster cast animations. The, the Fog mm -hmm. Shield is actually not the um, fastest cast animation, and it's relatively short radius. If you hover over, it looks like it's 450, maybe 500. It's not the biggest. And Naga, Siler, gonna get away with one there. He just happened to be going in the right direction while LV was going in the other and popped their smoke. They're gonna collapse back down to mid. Yell with an invis, trying to get an eye on the things. ZYF's at top. They're gonna try to cut across mid lane here and rotate to maybe... Grab him, but you're right, man. ZYF is playing so cautiously right now. Just knowing that's like, hey, there's nobody on the map, and now they see Yao up here suddenly right in front of the tower. And he's just like, yeah, I don't need to be there. It's fine. He's going straight up hard, by the way. He's already picked up a Reaver, has enough for his bit booster, and yeah, is not far from having his recipe. Very quick blink, by the way, from MMY. Probably just saved his life. Yeah, MMY is insane. He's a yeah. good player. Two, three, and three for him. I mean, not too bad. He had a very early blink, all things considered, for him. And uh, I will say he does have two nice, you know, solutions to illusions for anti-mage. 
which is the Hex and the Mana Drain. So when they do we get really beefy with the heart, they do die instantly if MMY is on top of his game, which I know he is. So at least they have that going for him. Well, the, the question to me now, and we, it's the phrase we've been using. We've read this book. We know how a, a, a game ends usually 95% of the time whenever you just let an August Iron farm. When is ZYF going to be ready to commit to, to crack the base? Like, he wants to farm, and I, like you said, get six slotted faster than the Naga. He's actually not on a pace to do that quite yet. He's about 2,500 gold and has been ahead of her in terms of net worth, but it's staying pretty static outside of big team losses. So the way that he's building right now is to go fight anyway. So, like, what do you think is going to be the go item? I mean, he, yeah, he's, yeah, just finished his heart. BKB, maybe? If he gets BKB, well, I don't know, against the bat? I, I don't know. Actually, I don't think so. If, if they plan to continue to, to use the Abad and they don't want a BKB. Well, there is a good thing with that, though. You can still use the Mist Coil on him. They changed that in a couple patches ago. Now, of course, if he does get AA Blast, it doesn't really matter, but still is an option. I wouldn't say that BKB is bad, though, for Anti-Mage. Bloodlust still stays on him as well. So he has that going for him. He, there are a lot of slows and stuns, like Lion is very, very good against the Anti-Mage. And so being able to just not worry about those problems for a full 10 seconds is pretty damn effective. And I wouldn't be surprised if he did go for it. But since he has the heart, it tells me he probably doesn't want to get it next, unless he really, really has to. If he's farming at this rate, it's going to be a butterfly. Oh, the Naga just finished her Manta. If he managed to get a butterfly, to me that would have to be the go work, because he is ahead of the Naga a little bit right now. He's in there with, with Inflame, and this could be disastrous. Angelai's got vision. How fast are you, Inflame? We're about to find out. They're going to go. And got him. No, actually, he got Inflame. He didn't get CYF. Inflame's stuck up there, but he's going to be able to TP out. No, Flame Break's going to knock him back. And they're trying to re-engage here. And yeah, ZYF's just going to go right up. And yes, the Mana Void gets the kill. Siler was heading in the wrong direction. It's an absolute fire drill for LGD. A mess of miscommunication. And they end up losing their bat after Inflame was lassoed instead of ZYF, and they're going to give up an Aegis because of it. What a heartbreaking 60 seconds there for LGD. Power is mine. Oh, poor Inflame, he already used his TP scroll, which was cancelled by the bat. But still a big win for them. Maybe he's like, dude, can someone buy a four staff and get me out of here, please? <laughs> Did you see what demons this did? Demon just, eh, here, have a bloodlust. He, like, walked up and cast bloodlust on us. I got you back, son. Don't worry, we won't leave you. I mean, the idea is, like, well, if I go on the anti-mage, he's just going to shield him. But I don't think you can afford to put a lasso on an Abaddon. That is, yeah. like, maybe if it was, like... A Vengeful Spirit, for example, like I was mentioning that instance earlier. Like, you, you can swap him out. Well, you can easily kill the Vengeful Spirit in a Bat Lasso. You cannot kill Abaddon whatsoever with a Lasso. And putting him up, the, up on the hill is nice, but doesn't really effectively do anything when you can't kill the Anti-Mage. I, I don't know that it wasn't a misclick. It seemed like it seemed like the follow-up from everyone on his team just wasn't there. They didn't know what to do. Well, why would they? But that's the thing. You can't follow up on a kill on Anti or on an Abaddon because you just his ult will proc and he will heal him. And he has an Aghanimus, yeah. by the way, which is very fun to look at. <laughs> and yeah, like I, I I I honest to goodness just think that was just one of those moments. Sometimes things don't go as planned, and it's heartbreaking because LGD missed a golden opportunity. And if I'm not mistaken, we've read this book before too. LV, after trailing for the majority of the game, half an hour they've spent at a deficit. Suddenly, they're the owner of the biggest lead of their uh, of the game so far for them. And it's, it's just 2K. But, I mean, that just shows they are really picking up the pace. ZYF has, yeah, he's going to have a butterfly before long at all, man. Like, he is right there. He's got his Eagle Song done. Um, I actually hope they push with this Aegis and don't try to wait on the butterflies. I think if they get a win now and get a Rax, it's almost like Radiant they have put themselves within fortified. arm's reach of being able to close this out. Yeah, Radiant's yeah, they could. Yeah, they could push right now. Actually, Dyer's they really wanted to, and they're going to go top. It's a bit of an easier access into the the top tier three. There's a little bit more space to work with. Free shielding ZYF just to mitigate some extra damage. Taking a lot of damage at the same time, though. Yeah, they're going to blow everything on him. There was the Ice Path, but he did Manta, and he does manage to blink away. He's going to wait this out, and he doesn't care to do this. And Inflame, like you said, even pre-shielded him with the Aphotic Shield just because of the Aegis. He did a little bit of damage there, not a ton, but more importantly, Siler is hemmed up right now. Yes, that is very important. He's not split-pushing another lane. 
Uh, Anti-Mage still has heart regen on top of shields and the Vladzor and whatnot. And keep in mind too, this Aghanims, I, I haven't seen it come into play ever really in a pro game, but it's pretty damn good. 35% of all damage in a 900 AoE, just all damage, just goes to Abaddon. <laughs> so yep. it's, like again, I haven't seen it in a real pro game, but I'm excited. ZYF, clearing out creeps, there's going to be the Stampede, are they going to try to go? Lin looking for a target, there's a lasso on the demons. Demons so caught with the Aphonic Shield, and in July is going to end up not quite dying. Lin BKB, he's going to be ensnared. And no, the BKB wore off just in time. How can they turn it around? Beautiful blink, and now ZYF. Oh, oh what a mana void! That's a triple kill for ZYF, and he's run them back to the fountain. Hell, he went and bought a butterfly. He owns that base. They're going to try to charge back out off the buybacks. They may get a couple, but the buybacks, so costly in and of themselves. He didn't even lose his ages. And they ended up losing the Abaddon as well as the Ogre Magi. But man, what a player. ZYF with a beautiful mana void. Has his butterfly done. We'll wait on his teammates to respawn. And they're going to take another run at it soon, I guarantee it. Is this guy the, the best player in China or something? Like, <laughs> I mean, he's super legit. I... Oh boy. I discovered him. I'll just say it. I discovered him. Yeah, it's us. We, we're, we basically made him this good, is what you're saying. <laughs> like it's, it's basically because of us that he, he does stuff like that. I, I think so. I mean, because well, what other tournament are they playing in right now? Huh? You want to answer that for me? Mm -hmm. Well, they played in, what was it? NEST? I think Shut it was what it was called. Shh. All right, all right, all right. No, for real, though. He's really good. <laughs> he's, re he's really good at Dota, and he's a pleasure to watch. So. They did force out a couple of buybacks, and it's not the end of the game. Um, the buybacks, though, very important, slowing things down. The Naga didn't die there. It's very important for LGD, but a gigantic play. And they're just going to reset. Here in mid, yeah, ZYF just going toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone he can get his hands on. Yao cannot stand the fire. Yeah, he definitely gets a basher next to replace his Aegis afterwards. Like, no, quit, no doubt about it. Doesn't need BKB at this sense when he's so far ahead. He's not very scared of anything at this point, so... Basher just really put on the aggression. Action actually bought him. His age just oh, does wear off. And Lin actually survived that. Was that because of an aphotic shield? I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah, he aphotic shielded him before the finger connected. That's why he survived that. That is sick. That is sick in flame. Like, seriously, his reactions are so good. He got the uh, aphotic shield off on demons, too, in the last fight at the, uh, at the top tier three. Like, I cannot yeah. believe how good he is on this Abaddon. He really is. Like, the only times we didn't see him become a crucial factor in the early fights was because he wasn't there. But when he's there, he's yeah. on point every single time. Yeah, I saw that one up top, too, on the Ogre. And then I saw a Mana Void just hit three heroes and kill them instantly. <laughs> then he bought a Butterfly, used the Flutter effect, which I didn't even realize has a uh, little sound to it, too. Just kind of, I was like, what I never noticed that either. Yeah, he used it up top. I was like, what the hell is that? I was like, oh, oh it's the it. flutter effect. Do it. I want to hear it. Let's see if he does it here. Let's just watch him for like 30 seconds or two right. minutes and see if he does it. <laughs> I've got the camera locked on him, actually. Come on, flutter. Oh, go fast. Flutter. Here go fast. Flutter, you fool. Fly. Fly. Fly, McConaughey. Fly. Uh, there's a heart on Naga. So as good as ZYF is doing, they need to get this done soon. They don't need to waste a lot more time. Like, I don't care how Dyer's far the enemy mage is. I don't care how comfortable they feel. They need to to be to win this game. Or the Naga will make them pay for taking their time like this. Maybe go in Abyssal first, and at Abyssal, he's just going to go. It's just going to be all in. And there's going to be a quick pause. It's 13 to 15. And LV turned the gold graph upside down. Took the biggest lead of the game and made it their own. So a complete reversal of their fate. Same for the uh, experience as well. This could be our last game, guys. Hope you uh, have all enjoyed this D2L Season 5 Eastern Division. Winner of this goes to Vegas. LV leads this best of five, two to nothing. So they just need to close this game out. Or if you're LGD, you better hope you've got a lot of gas in the tank because you've got to win three in a row to be able to get yourself to Vegas now. And LGD was at our last D2L uh, Grand Finals in Vegas, so... They'd certainly like a return trip. LV, though, this this is such a, yeah. I mean, we can talk and talk and talk, but they are good. Like, they're, it's one thing to be good individually, and they definitely are. 
but it's they're good individually and they all work remarkably well together. Like we're not seeing a whole lot of missteps from them in terms of communication and just overall coordination. Yeah. And Ogre Magi is a little indecisive about what he wants to max out here. He's got three, 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 two. But I think that definitely next point should probably go into this bloodlust because it's paying off big time for this oh, yeah. anti mage. Like I mentioned, it doesn't matter that he has BKB or not, because even if he did, it would still stick with him. But having that extra attack speed to just quickly, quickly burn down the mana, like the mana pool of Ember Spirit's not very high. And he desperately needs that. His remnants cost 150 each time. So he, he can't afford to lose his mana pool. Naga Siren, if you can zone in on the right one, loses it quickly. All these heroes are actually very mana dependent if you really think about it. So when he's attacking that fast with illusions, that's that's why you get those fast uh, mana voids in just, you know, half a second. Oh yeah, for sure. He's up to 3,800 gold and we'll see what he wants to do. I mean, I would imagine he wants his buyback for sure. And I just, I, I worry. Like, if they continue to wait, and then the Naga can punish them. Naga, we saw him, just got her heart. So these illusions are no joke now. Oh, there's the flutter. You see it? Uh, no. Damn it. I, I, like, have been watching him forever. <laughs> and I flash to the Naga to talk about the Naga. Like, ooh, flutter. Sorry, right, I'll find it on somewhere. That or maybe I'll just get to see it. On my own, as it stands right now, though, LV taking their time and LGD just awaiting the coming storm. Nice blast in mid. What level is it? What we got here. One level two. Nowhere clear sight of an ax, unfortunately for him. Yeah. Which is not good. I think it'd be very, very useful against an Abaddon. And uh, he's got another 2,400 gold himself. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes for like a four staff or a blink. Just something to be a little bit more effective and to be just that much quicker with the Aphotic Shields. Or Hex. Hex is really good too. CYF knew him and why was over here, or at least suspected it. He teleported out just a minute ago, and he blinked right to where he was standing, too. Just he'd already left. But looks like they want to wait for Roshan at the very least. And if they're going to do that, they're going to be waiting a little while. A few more minutes. And Andy Mage doesn't care. He is farming at a, a ridiculous rate. He's sitting at 778 GPM, man. He is in great shape. Yeah, and he could buy a part of his basher, but... They are anticipating this Aegis, and he wants a slot for that. So he's going to TP top. Pushes out probably to, like, right there. Roshan should respawn by that time. He comes, you know, clears out some camps and comes back around. Denies the tower. So, yeah, a little bit of static play here from LV until that Roshan does respawn. Taking a look at buybacks across the board. It is the Naga Siren with one, Annie Mage with one, Abaddon, and the Ember. Everybody else either on cooldown or not enough gold. And, yeah, I think they're just waiting to six six slot him and have buyback. I think at that point they just want to go for the throne and go for the win. Buys bots, actually, and a basher. Hmm. And he doesn't have buyback, so he needs to farm about another 1,000, 1,200 gold to be super safe. But I do think Roshan is really going to be the go word. They want an Aegis on him. I don't know. It couldn't be on him because they don't. he doesn't have room. I guess they put it on the Abaddon. Or the Centaur. Yeah, Centaur would probably be the better candidate. Yeah, Abaddon's probably not going to die, so... Yep. <laughs> che cheese on, like, the Ogre, who, by the way, is getting very low. Yeah. yeah cheese on... Is this third? Let me let me click on him. I, oh, I can't click on him. Yep. They have to clear the illusion out as... Yeah, Radiant's Demons is, is heading attack. elsewhere. Heading back to the Hoose. Wants to recharge a bit. And Ember has his remnant in the pit. It's going to be about 60 seconds now, give or take. And ZYF. Being pinged out, they know where he is. He walked right underneath a ward. Good luck catching him. He's got more than enough money for buyback. And, oh, he's going to double back. Let's see. Oh, he doesn't know they're here. He just... Oh, he does know they're here. Oh, he just goes in and gets a solo kill because he can. Now the whole team's going to collapse, though, and he's been caught. So tanky, though. He needs to make up his mind. Okay. That's a feed. That's really nothing but a feed. And I'm a little curious why he just... I mean, I guess I know. I mean, he... Went back in, assuming he could get a quick kill, but then he just sat around. And then he got caught with the Hex and everything else and got the bat. That's really not acceptable for him. Like, that's actually a big deal for this Naga Siren. And she's getting close to a butterfly of her own. That's very problematic for this Animage. Like, right now is when they should have been fighting at the base. Yeah, well, they, they were waiting for Roshan, but he 
he wasn't even trying to go on the bat. He they had absolutely no vision. He casts his flutter, which basically means he's not fighting because he, you know you lose out on the evasion. Mm -hmm. So he just blinked in there, reacted quickly to the fact that bat was there, popped his mantle, went for a kill. But then of course the rest of the team was there, so he had no idea that he was uh, was being chased down there in the jungle like that. At least he doesn't have to buy back, but he will soon. Centaur, they know. And yep, there's the illusion. They know they know. And if they're going to stop this, they got to go now. And if they end up giving this up, this is such a huge deal, man. It really is. Yeah. And no buyback from the Animage. It's going to be the cold feet. And yeah, they're not going to contest it. They can't. If they don't want to buy back on the Animage, they cannot contest this. And I want to know who this is going to go on. I guess it'll go on Naga. She'll drop her bottle. Naga or I guess Yao could take it probably too. Like, Naga has Boots to Travel. Yeah, it's going to be Yao. So if Naga does die, she can uh, buy back Boots to Travel. The same kind of idea goes with Yao though, because he can just throw a Remnant down and buy back that way. But I think that Yao is much more likely to die than Naga. So yeah, Butterfly picked up for Naga. So she is five slotted. Has one more slot available. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Did, am I seeing this correct? Yeah, that's a, that's a Scepter Radiance. A bad... I want to do this. Let's pub after this, can we? I am flabbergasted. <laughs> well, let's talk it out. Let, let's hug it out here and get ourselves together and see what we think. I mean, it's good, obviously, for a number of reasons. Um, you're going to be able to burn down. I, I really like the fact that um, if he's up front and just leading with the face, and July is not going to be able to blink. Sure. Um, that's nice. It's Same very with the tough for, yeah. It's very tough for both of them to just sit and tank. The ancient apparition cannot be anywhere near it, or he's going to die immediately. Yeah, I mean it's fine, and it gives him right click. Cause what's he doing? I mean he's basically keeping everyone alive and running forward and just using Curse of Avernus to, to hit heroes that are high priority. So why not give him more damage and some AOE burn that disables the blinks that have been killing you? I dig it. Oh, I don't know, man. I feel like they're that fifty four hundred gold or whatever it is could have been invested in. Something so much more effective. I think th the very least he just wants to push out the lanes, but I feel like Mjolnir is just generally ten times better than Radiance at this stage of the game. So yeah, very interesting. But of course Mjolnir doesn't cancel the blinks, so that's why I'm going back to the idea that I think it is primarily just to cancel the blinks of the bat and the, and the lion, so that he can just run up in the front lines, absorb damage, make them waste their time, pop the ulti. If they get hurt in the background, well, he heals them for 35%, or at least reduces the damage by 35%. So, I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I'm trying my best to justify this, but I'm, I'm still not sold. ZYM back up to 3,800 gold, and that means his Abyssal's done, but it'll cost him buyback, so he certainly will keep farming. I actually feel like he's missed his window. I'm really worried for LV now. The, the, the window of time when he had a butterfly and the Naga did was when they needed to go. Now, not only does Naga have one of her own, but the Ember Spirit has an MKB, and they're trying to chase down in flame. He's going to find a haste room. And, oh, in July, can't catch him. Okay, that's a... Why? I... Yeah, I guess Borrowed Time's going to turn. Now Faith caught from behind. And I guess he's trying to put the blink on the cooldown. However, CYF there to clean house. He got a bash. And he actually didn't see which way he went. He went after MMY. There's going to be the Hex, but Yao is very low. So he's got to run. CYF can blink onto him, and there's going to be the Song of the Siren from Siler. And that'll be enough to get them back to safety. They end up trading the Abaddon for the Ancient Apparition. But, yeah, I guess I, I, I thought the Abaddon was just going to keep running. He turned and miscoiled, and I suppose it was just because he didn't want the bat to be able to blink. But he had Radiance but, on him. Yeah, that's what I was getting ready to say. <laughs> that's, why, that's why it confused me. Is why? He wasn't going to blink. He could not blink on you from that distance anyway. He did have a Force Staff, though, but it's not like miscoil helps with that. So, yeah. I don't know. I guess just one of those panic moments where you forget what you have. Or maybe he got the call from his team, like, go fight them, we're coming. And he just uh, wanted to turn very around. Very possible. I don't know. We don't know exactly what was said, but either way, he did get caught out, and trading his life for an Abaddon, or sorry, for an Ancient Apparition is certainly not worth it, so. There's the Abyssal. There's the Abyssal. That's really important. Very, very important, actually. But what's also important is that Yao didn't die, and he was very close to dying and had the Aegis, so. Demons is very low and needs to be very careful. Like, very careful. Oh, Lin. Got to be blinked upon. They got him. He's got a BKB. They're going to be able to chain stun him, though. And he's down in a flash. And, wow, there's an ensnare on the ZYF. He mantis, but can't get out of it quite yet. 
And now he's ready to go. He's actually eating a fair amount of damage. Gonna try to get on the Naga and 60 seconds. Not that long, huh? Level 16 ulti. And ZYF's gonna try to follow it. Oh, big multicast and in July's down. And ZYF still moving. And yep, he actually just used Flutter and caught Faith because of it. Uses the Abyssal. He's got enemies to the north and he just wants the man mode. Chasing Siler, and he got the bash! First hit, but he can't continue. Again, the presence of the butterfly on the other side as well. He's out. Oh, MMY just came in at a horrible angle. And that's a triple kill for ZYF as he is just rampaging from one end of this map to the other. What's the buyback status? No one except None. for Yao and Naga. No, these three heroes don't have buyback. This is plenty of time. Naga doesn't have sleep for 16 seconds. Mm -hmm. And we gotta see what they prioritize. There's gonna be buildings, there's gonna be heroes. They're going right to the tier three. Here comes Yao trying to do what he can. ZYF, they gotta get this tower down. He's actually banging away on the illusions for the most part. The Aegis is actually gone now. And he has to save his teammates. Had to get the illusions off. Yeah, he's gonna go. And there's gonna be Song. Back up. Ancient Apparitions up. Expect an Ice Blast on the way. Right on ZYF's face. Kaboom. And behind that, lots of damage coming out of Yao. Actually triggered the borrowed time. Siler's trying to chase him down. In July, gonna go ahead and use his lasso to grab Inju, um... Yeah, and grab the Abad. And now, Demon's just gonna burn to death. Oh no, they lost him. Nope, they think they know where he is. Yeah, they got him. <laughs> like it was just stands there. <laughs> yeah, just stands facing the wall down. Like, yeah. uh, it looked like, um... What was that movie? The Blair Witch Project. Where he's just, like, yeah. looking at the corner. <laughs> he even looked kinda sad. Oh, MMY caught! He's down! And ZYF is just slippery, man. Slippery. He's got 5k gold and nothing to spend it on. Like, I feel like he needs an MKB so bad. Like, he's not going to be able to kill this Naga Siren without one. He's just not. Yeah, I, I kind of agree. Oh, some all chat banter. And I'm wondering what he sells, though, for it. Like, everyone, instinctively, everyone wants to say, like, oh, sell the Battle Fury. But Battle Fury is so important late game. People seem to f forget that. that. Pushing out the lanes is the primary, you know, that's why you pick anti-mage, is just to rat and push out lanes as fast as possible. So I, I actually don't think it has to be, or even can be, the battle for you. He actually buys a gem for his team because he can't really do anything more with his gold. Is it a heart? Does he replace the heart? Does he replace the manta? I think he needs the health. I think it's got to be the manta. It, it would have been, I think it would have been better if he just never bought the abyssal. I th no, man. Abyssal's so think it, good. Think he needs it that bad? I think it's so good. Yeah. It it gives him the ability to actually lock someone down. And yeah. like, to, like for instance, he can 1v1 a Naga easily with the Abyssal just because he's attacking so fast with Butterfly and the um, the buff from the Ogre, the Bloodlust. Manta is then. I just know he needs an MKB. Because like, he had her, you know, he got the bash, then he hit her like three or four times. She'd have been nice chunks of damage and, you know, not much because of the evasion. That or, they, uh, that or they just need to get a hex on everyone. Like, they need a hex on everyone and then just let the anti-mage follow and uh, and handle it that way. Speaking of, there's going to be a hex on the ZYF. MMY dead immediately. There's going to be the Song of the Siren. Saves him. Lim with the BKB. And he will end up dead. ZYF's still up and he's going to charge back out. Uh, didn't he? No. Yeah, he actually took the long road. And he's on the way. That bloodlust allowing him to run. He does decide to blink away. Doesn't like the way it looks. It was him on four. Fix up a and haste. Yeah. Uh, let's see what's he gonna do with it. I love the I love the way any major runs with a haste. Looks like a little kid. We're gonna, oh, this is oh, this is risky. Going right on in in July's there. He does not have it. He actually gets the mana void off. But now he's locked down. Can they follow it up? The rest of his team's coming. Siler! Siler's caught! They've got him cornered in! Siler should have gotten out a long time ago. Now he has to run CYF. Oh, they're searing chains. Well played by Yao. Without that, Siler's most likely dead. And ZYF still chasing him out. Searing Chains got the Anti-Mage. That saved him. Maybe. And he doesn't have the stun. Would have had to get lucky with a bash. Pure pandemonium. Here in this late game. We're coming up on 50 minutes, but it's getting to where individual plays are saving this game on either side. Gold graph, experience graph, whatever. I don't even think it matters anymore. This game is going to come down to which team makes the most plays and which team makes the best decisions. I don't think there's any doubt about that now. I'm almost thinking now he does sell the Battle Fury, because I think Manta's too important as well. I think the ability to just be elusive and that split second where, which which illusion is it, is just enough time to actually own them and just make them too confused about which one to go on. Not to mention the extra mana burn you get from the Manta illusions is really good, so... Mm -hmm. 
I don't know. I'm, I'm on the fence, but I do agree with you. I think that just seeing him try to fight an illusion forever just because he can't hit it yep. is, is kind of a problem. Maybe they push a Rax first just so they at, at least have that innate you know, lane pushing. They don't have to worry about the Battle Fury push too much, but I am curious. I do think it is uh, necessary, though. Yeah, I mean, he's just never... You're going to have to kill the Naga. Like, you're not going to win this game without killing Naga Siren. And it's either that or a Hex. Like, either that or he just goes, okay, I think I'm better than than, um, than the Naga. I think I'm better than Siler. And we're just going to farm until everyone has a Hex. And then the, you guys are going to Hex her, chain Hex her, and that's going to be that. Like, that's what it's going to have to take. Roche is going to be up shortly. He just actually blinked right past in July. And in July, coming back in. Mantis and has to force staff away. Yao coming in. And yeah, he's actually going to catch in July. Down he goes to a Vandom Void. <laughs> he's so badass, man. He's so good. Like, so fast. Let's get a BKB. And now Siler. What can he do? There's the double edge, but he's so tanky. There's the ensnare. They're going to try to focus him down. And now they're going to re-engage. And there's the borrow time. Proc by Inflame. Oh, he's going to get everyone. Got them all hemmed up. Faith is down. MMY's in trouble. He's going to end up down. Lasso on the CYF, but they have to head back. Siler going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. He just can't hit. In the meantime, Lin got in July, and down he goes. Oh DDC cleaning him God. up, and that's a double kill for him, and they got the bash. Will they be able to bring Siler down? Siler has buyback, but they get him. Triple kill, immediate buyback on Siler and Yao. There's the glyph, and let's see if they actually decide to stay and commit. Siler hanging around. He's got 18 seconds until he's going to have Song of the Siren up one more time. Yao just doing what he can. Doesn't matter. Can't stop these racks from crumbling. That's free. And let's see if they want to back reset and take a Roshan. Buyback does not exist for MMY, for the Ancient Apparition, or for the Bad Rider. He had already bought back. They just win here, I think. I don't know how they, they stop any of this. Like, they're going to be... That's fine. They can sing. I guess they're waiting on the Ice Blast and hoping. MMY's back up as well. But this Tier 3's down for sure. And there's Searing Chains. He actually ate a 1,000 damage right there. So he might want to back on off now. Tier 3 then bang down to half. And they're going to try to catch someone. Siler rushing out. There was the Ensnare onto Inflame. Yeah, I believe they, like they have three Force Staffs as well. That was double Force Staff on the Anti-Mage and a third Force Staff actually onto the... Ensnared Abaddon as well. Up oh, Ensnare. That's on to uh, the Abaddon. He's forced out to the high ground. Demons got caught. And can't save it. Very nice on that. Here comes the Stampede. Looked like they wanted to engage from the high ground, but Inflame is fighting this off on his own. He's going to be careful. He's going to end up dead here. Nah, he's got bard time. Still don't want to just have it proc for no reason. And they're going to go on into Roshan. The Ogre's still down. Is there any way they can challenge this trout? Yeah, it's risky. Oh, here yep, we they're go. gonna go. Bringing down face sure helps. Now they're gonna turn it around. CY up. Gonna be lasso. Best lasso he's ever gotten on this anti mage. Double damage is picked up. CYF dead. Brutal. He's got buyback. But I don't think he. Yeah, he's gonna go ahead and spin it. Is he coming in? I think he's just leaving. Just walking out of the base. That's actually a big deal. Even though it's just like, oh, he can buy back. It's fine. For the next seven minutes, give or take. They can make no mistakes. If ZYF dies, it's probably GG. Very scary. Yeah, that, that's why I said it's risky. His evasion just doesn't mean anything when he gets hexed up like that. That's what you were talking about. Maybe a hex up onto the onto Siler as well. And Flame gets caught out. Lin comes in. Wow, they're going save your buddy syndrome. And here comes ZYF behind. Siler, going to use mirror image. He's hanging around a lot here. And yeah, they're not even going to try. Just going to go right after the... Illusions. And back at base, LGD needs to heal up. The Ogre's back up. Their Abaddon is hurting a bit. In Flame. May need to go back and heal. Looks like he's not going to go too far back. But for now, ZYF. ZYF has 9,000 gold. Or 8,500 gold, man. Like, he has got an unbelievable amount of gold. And a bounty room because, oh, he's not even. Yeah, he just pings it as he walks by. Because somebody that needs gold. Come here. Get this. I'm a little worried. That, that they need to be if they really want to be careful anti mage should wait until he has buyback cooldown when that's over because if he yeah like you said if he dies i don't know how much punching power they have without him no abaddon's none. okay he's actually yeah i think this is the right call i think he's gonna go for hex and he desperately needs it i think he should have got hex before radiance in my honest mm -hmm. opinion but not to say that radiance hasn't done anything like oh in flame 
Brought down. He is down for the count as well. There's no buyback there. He is down at least for a while. There is a tier two in the way. They do have the glyph. And this is scary. ZYF, though, knows he can try to push top and maybe force them back. And he can solo kill. Yeah, they have to send back, a, a, like, if the Naga. Oh, he'll, he's just going to kill him. And why? Are they going to try to base race this? Really? Yeah, they've got to send more back. There you go. I was going to say, like, if they just run MMY up there and he hexes, he's just going to turn around and kill him in one shot. Speaking of killing one shot, Jesus, Xiao's hitting hard. They can just, if they can find the real Silo who's just sitting right there, he could probably kill him. This is the, the part of the game when ZYF maybe wants to think about buying some seventh and, and eighth items. Like, pop, yep. have a BKB on a courier, throw it in your inventory, oh, pop it. Oh, look at this. Oh, They're going to go. Oh, this is huge if he dies. Oh, if he dies, it might be game. And they're trying to follow it up. He actually is just getting bounced around. Cold Feet does proc. Here comes the rest of the team, and he's down to half health. Four staff again, and that's going to be enough to get him out of it. He did get that lasso, though. Being brought back, and down he goes. Lin's there. They're going to be able to follow up on Siler. Siler quite low health, but he's down for 120 seconds. There is no buyback. Lin's down now. He's the only one that had buyback, and he uses it. Oh, man. That is brutal, and that might be game if they can't come up with a miracle. If they take... This tier three, they're going to be able to rush to the throne. And without any mage, I don't think they can stop them. There's the glyph. Well, they Taking got a four. Deep breath. Yep. yep, they're going right for the throne. Here comes in flame. Now, buy in time is all they can do, but Siler's just outputting so much damage. And down goes one tier four. Yao putting out a ton of damage on his own. There's going to be the ice blast. Demons is down. I think that, yeah, this is ball game. Y'all just bought a rapier, because why not? And that's going to do that. Huh. A thrilling game that looked like LV was going to end up pulling out. Turns around in a hurry off of one and make that two deaths. They're going to come back out, try to buy some time, but it doesn't matter. They're not even focusing on anything. And there you go. LGD found, finding themselves with their backs against the wall. Find a way to win. Naga Siren did what she's supposed to do. And unfortunately for LV, they're going to have to take a look at a game four. ZYF dying and buying back, taking a gamble on the Roshan and ends up dying. That lack of buyback, we said it as soon as it happened. It was scary. If he died again, it could be game. And sure enough, it was. Yeah, two things. One, I don't think they had any business rushing into Roshan like that with 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 Lion being around and having extra you know, high ground vision with the Batrider. It's a big mistake. But an even bigger mistake was the decision to actually buy back and then not do anything with it. Like Roshan was definitely going to die. They couldn't re-engage that. He already used his boots to travel before that to get in the position that he did when he died at Roshan. So he couldn't use his boots to travel again. And that it's funny how you could look so dominant in a game like that. But one small mistake against a team like that in, at the late stage of the game against Naga, totally game over. And it's unfortunate because he played so well up until that point. Don't know that I have a whole lot more to add. Well played by LGD. And MMY had an uncharacteristically, I won't say bad, but he struggled a bit on the Lion. Usually a little bit more effective. In July was was uh, stultified quite a bit by, uh, by a bad, but he still managed to get some lassos when it counted. And uh, Yao actually, I feel like he's an unsung hero here. Finished up 8-2 and 13. So he was very impactful. His last hits were number three on the board behind the obvious front runner. 638 last hits, by the way, for any mage. How ridiculous is that? Finished with 821 GPM and still lost. But I feel like he played a hell of a game of Dota. And in a lot of ways, that damage that they needed, the MKB being out on him and not on the Naga, for example, meant he had to be a big part of bursting him down. And if I had to point to one thing, I think the, I mean, the Abyss was so good. You needed an MKB or you needed Hexes. You can say the Abaddon should have gotten the Hex first, and I think he should have. I think you're right. And if the animation could have found a way to have slid a MKB into his into his build, I mean, you have to have that. And I, it was, I even said it before, I feel like there was a window of about five to eight minutes when he had Butterfly and the Naga didn't, and they really didn't push hard enough. They really didn't force the issue enough. And in the end, it's LGD forcing us to at least a game four, and they hope to a game five. I'm your host, Aaron AC Chambers. Thanks again for being a part of the broadcast. Guys, D2L Season 5 Eastern Division playoffs are grand finals now. Roll on. Game four is on the way. We're going to see if LV, given a second chance, can close this series out, or if LGD's got a bit more fight in them. And we're going to see a game five after all. We'll be right back. Stick with us.